Uh, welcome to our first study session. You had a chance to look at the first two Psalms this week as a way of introducing book one of the Psalter and the Psalter as a whole. The first two Psalms serve as the introduction that ground us in two key themes that will be critical for understanding the rest of the Psalms. In some ways, both Psalms 1 and 2 give us the key to a happy life. As you noticed in your study, uh, Psalm 1 begins with the word happy, and Psalm 2, the last verse of Psalm 2, concludes with uh, the word uh, happy. And this these two psalms then have a framing around them of, of happiness. And it's not that a happiness like we usually think of as the word happy today, like my goal in life is to be happy. Instead, what this is talking about, to be happy in the book of Psalms, and this is true in the scriptures, is to be in the state of being blessed by God. Uh, the language happy that we see in Psalm 1 and 2, and we're going to see this word recur throughout our lessons in the psalms that we're going to look at over these next 12 weeks, uh, this, the word happy is the same word that Jesus will use in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, which uh, starts off happy. And so these psalms give us a guide to essentially the good life. Uh, Psalm 1, as you observed, uh, invites us to engage in the constant and perpetual reflection and meditation on the Scriptures as, as, the, as the key resource for an individual to move through life. You may have noticed our, our psalm in our translation starts off, blessed are those. Um, the word blessed there again ought to be translated happy. And the those is in the original language is a singular. So Psalm 1 has a singular vision of what the happy life looks like. So it grounds an individual. And how is it that an individual can make it through the world? This, uh, psalm 1 tells us that we need to get a hold of an, uh, an attitude and then a habit. Uh, the attitude is delight. Uh, how do you avoid the negative influences of the world? You uh, delight in God's Word and meditate on it day and night. And you meditate on it in the same way that um, a lion would gnaw on a bone. It's the idea that you're just enjoying the Scripture. So we want to uh, uh, cultivate that attitude of delight and then uh, to have, make it a habit of constantly reflecting. And so as we read through the Psalms, you're going to be looking at a Psalm every single day or five out of the seven days of each week. And so the, the Psalm 1 grounds us in Scripture. Uh, Psalm 2 takes a bigger approach, a more of a macro approach. If Psalm 1 focuses on the individual and how do we gain security in life, it's through uh, fe uh, feasting on the Word. Psalm 2 gives us a big picture that deals with uh, things that are really outside of the individual's control. Psalm 2 uh, imagines a scenario where all of the nations and the kings of the earth are raging against what God wants to do in the world. And uh, the world can be a scary place sometimes, and, and as we're going to read through the Psalms, there's going to be lots of disruptions and challenges in our lives, but Psalm 2 grounds us by essentially giving us the big picture and announcing the end game that is the abiding reality of life. And, and, and what Psalm 2 says is if the individual, if Psalm 1 says the individual can find security and a way through the world through Scripture and then achieve success of uh, achieving God's will in a moment, Psalm 2 reminds God's people that the Lord has control over history. So no matter how crazy the world seems sometimes, God has already created a, a secure view, vision for the future that we can begin to experience in the present. Psalm 2 uses the language of the, the Lord laughing at the nations and peoples of the world who are coming against God's people and against God's kingdom. And God's plan then is to use His Messiah uh, his king. In the Old Testament, this would have been the, the actual Davidic king. Uh, Psalm 2 points ultimately to Jesus as the Messiah. In other words, the, 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 the human agent through whom God is going to advance and administer and secure his kingdom. Jesus fulfills that role in the ultimate sense because he's both God and human. And so what Psalm 2 does is it declares that our future is absolutely secure. And so what can we do now in the present? We can remain faithful. And Psalm 2 also has a missional focus. 
Uh, one of the themes we're going to look at throughout our studies of the Psalms is going to be that the, the Psalms serve God's people as our prayer book so that we can serve as God's hands, feet, and mouthpieces as His ambassadors to the, to the nations. And Psalm 2 reminds us of that by, at the end, the last few verses of Psalm 2 invites those very kings that were raging, those very nations that were warring against God's mission to come to the table and find happiness and blessedness in uh, the Lord. So as you wrap up and discuss these texts this week, I want to invite you to ponder this. Um, how are your roots? Again, Psalm 1 invites us as individuals to do exactly what we're doing together, which is reading the Scriptures. And the, and the Scriptures root us in, in, in God Himself. That's what the picture of verse 3 is. You have this picture of the, uh, this fertile tree. And uh, the tree is, is, isn't fertile because it's necessarily healthy and green and perfect on its own. It's fertile and it always has leaves. It always bears fruit. Why? Because it's rooted in the waters. And that symbolizes in the scriptures, as you saw this week, that symbolizes the very waters of life that, uh, that God offers to us. So the question for us today, as uh, we do our study together, is this, um, how deep are your roots? Um, what habits, what practices are you already cultivating in your life that will sustain you for the long run? Because as we get into the Psalms and the rest of the Psalms, what we're going to find out is this secure picture, this picture of happiness that we see Psalm 1 and 2 is the abiding reality for life that God invites us to, but that isn't going to make us immune from the hardships that often come when we follow Jesus faithfully into, into a world that doesn't yet know Him. So as you reflect on these scriptures together, again, open yourself up and ask yourself, um, what habits and practices is God inviting me to cultivate in my life right now so that I can be rooted and ready to enjoy God's abundance in the present in anticipation of that secure and wonderful future that God has for us.